Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully in this upcoming unit of fractions, there won't be too many um, headaches and worries and, and tears, but there's probably going to be a couple tears because the, the stuff we're dealing with, it's, it's, it's difficult, it's new to a certain degree um, in the amount that we're going to be using fractions, and, um, and I think we should be proactive about it. So we're going to take some time uh, in this video and in the next couple videos just reviewing some of the concepts from fourth grade uh, in terms of, uh, of creating common fractions, of, of renaming fractions off of um, a common den denominator and uh, a common multiple. And we'll, we'll speak directly in class to that vocabulary. But this, this uh, graphical organizer here looks probably dizzying and confusing. But uh, let's just jump into how we're going to use it. So students will be um, faced with a question like this. They'll have a fraction like 1 sixth, and they will have to find out how it needs to become 12. And for 1 sixth to stay equal to a certain amount of 12, the number you multiply both numerator and denominator by have to be the same number. So if I multiply this by 2 and this by 3 up here, I'm not going to have an equivalent um, amount of twelfths over here. So from 6 to 12, I have to multiply it by 2 to get to 12, okay? I automatically write that same number in the top box because I know for it to be equivalent, the bottom and the top have to be multiplied by the same varying degree. So 1 times 2 is 2, and we know that 2 twelfths is equal to 1 sixth. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully in this upcoming unit of fractions, there won't be too many um, headaches and worries and, and tears, but there's probably going to be a couple tears because the, the stuff we're dealing with, it's, it's, it's difficult, it's new to a certain degree um, in the amount that we're going to be using fractions, and, um, and I think we should be proactive about it. So we're going to take some time uh, in this video and in the next couple videos just reviewing some of the concepts from fourth grade uh, in terms of uh, of creating common fractions, of, of renaming fractions off of um, a common den denominator and uh, a common multiple. And we'll, we'll speak directly in class to that vocabulary. But this, this uh, graphical organizer here looks probably dizzying and confusing. But uh, let's just jump into how we're going to use it. So students will be um, faced with a question like this. They'll have a fraction like 1 sixth, and they will have to find out how it needs to become 12. And for 1 sixth to stay equal to a certain amount of 12, the number you multiply both numerator and denominator by have to be the same number. So if I multiply this by 2 and this by 3 up here, I'm not going to have an equivalent um, amount of twelfths over here. So from 6 to 12, I have to multiply it by 2 to get to 12, okay? I automatically write that same number in the top box because I know for it to be equivalent, the bottom and the top have to be multiplied by the same varying degree. So 1 times 2 is 2, and we know that 2 twelfths is equal to 1 sixth. So in this example, I have, you know, 4 6 8 twelfths, 10 fifteenths. It, <clears throat> is there a way to make 2 thirds become 4 6 8 twelfths, or 10 fifteenths? Is there a multiplier that I can multiply to the top, the numerator, the bottom, denominator, numerator, denominator? Is there a multiplier I could plug in here that makes... 4, 6, 8 twelfths, and 10 fifteenths. Sorry about my phone. Um, and, and, and you would say, yeah. I mean, if you knew your multiplication tables, if you knew multiples, you would say, I can put 2 in here, and 2 times 2 would be 4, and 3 times 2 would be 6. So, in fact, 
you were able to make that guy. And then you would say, well, is there something I can do in that same fashion to make 8 twelfths? If you put in 4 here, if you said times 4, would that make 8 twelfths? And some of you are saying, yeah, 2 times 4 is 8, and 3 times 4 is 12. So that, in fact, works. And lastly, is there something you can do to make 10 and 15 from 2 thirds? And in fact, yes. If you did times 5 on the top and the bottom, you would have 10 fifteenths. And that would work. And friends, putting that multiplier in there, on the numerator and denominator and renaming the fraction doesn't change the value. We see from this example, sorry, yeah. Yeah, hold on. Sorry. We see from this example that two thirds is equivalent in size, overall size of the four sixths. Okay, and I have some of them upside down, I apologize. But we see that they are the exact same size. These two-thirds do not take up any more room or any less room than these four-sixths, and that would be equivalent if I had eight-twelfths, and that would be the same thing if I had ten of the fifteenths. That renaming the fraction doesn't change the size of the fraction, when it's equivalent. However, if I were to do times 5 on the top and times 3 on the bottom, that would not work. That would not create, that would not yield a common equivalent fraction. So I hope that helped out. Oh hey there, glad you're back. In this scenario, I'm trying to compare 3 fifths and 14 twentieths. Like if I said, hey guys, I'm going to give you 3 fifths of this pizza. And, or, well, or I can give you 14 twentieths of this pizza. What would you like? How much, which one of these portions would you like? Would you like 3 fifths or 14 twentieths? And some people are like, well, I want the 14 pieces. That's that's a lot more pieces. And some of you say, well, the fifths, those are larger size pieces. These 20 size pieces are tiny. Well, we're going to refer back to this, this uh, sorry, that thing's like, I had to redraw it, and it looks crazy, but you get the point. We're going to refer, we're gonna refer back to this uh, little graphical uh, tool to help us. And um, I have to look at these two fractions and say, okay, what I know about the numbers 3 fifths and 14 twentieths is 5 can multiply to become 20. I can multiply 5 by something and get 20. So if I put 3 fifths in here, and I know 5 times 4, I can already put that up top. I know I have to. If I say 5 times 4, that's going to get me 20. I know my common basic facts. I know 3 times 4 is 12, so what I just did is I renamed that 3 fifths as 12 twentieths. And if I compared these now, would you like 12 twentieths or 14 twentieths? You would be correct in saying, I want the 14 twentieths. That's the larger portion. Um, it doesn't always work out that the larger numerator means that it's uh, a greater value. That that example did, um, but this is a fail-safe way. Renaming the fractions with a common denominator um, will help you compare them and help you order them from least to greatest. Uh, you have to do that when you subtract them and when you add them, and um, hopefully that this video has helped you with this first portion of what we're doing in Stepping Stones. And um, I'll be sure to post more videos as we go along. And as always, if you need anything, if you have any questions, uh, please email me and reach out. And I'll do my best to, uh, to post them up in a timely manner. Again, thank you guys for sticking here with me. Um, and uh, as always, math is cool. I love it. I want you guys to, to get to the point where you all are loving it as well. So 
hopefully that was helpful and have a wonderful day. Sweetheart.